Pangwada Pimidao Ping An. Reading today from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father God knows, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from the Father. Pong wa da, bin mi dao, bing an. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Pam, Pacific Asian American Mystery, was founded in 1974 in the United Church of Christ. The first gathering was in San Francisco with 100 participants. Pam is also one of the historically underrepresented groups recognized by UCC. The version of P the PAM has many. Three of them are following to encourage Pacific Islanders and Asian Americans of all ages to affirm their unique ethnic and culture identities and to develop their theologies. To, f uh, to facilitate the involvement of the Pacific Islanders and Asian Americans in instructionist agency, task forces, conference associations, and all other settings of the UCC. To combat institutional racism and promote pluralism within the UCC and in a struggle for justice toward the global the goal of the reconciliations of all people. While most of the mainline church, uh, mainline Christian denominations are white denominations, our church seems to be quite unique and queer. Among the population in the United States, 60% are white, 18% are Latinx, 30% are African or black be in the capital. 3.9% are Asian and Pacific Islanders. Oh, excuse me. Asian are 5.9%. Native Hawaiian and Pacific Island are only 0.2%. Within UCC congregations, 83.9% are white. 4.9 are black, 3.9 are Asian and Pacific Islanders, and 6.4 6 are biracial or multiracial. Within PCUSA, 89.9 are white, 3.8 
are Asian. 3.3 are black. We think UMC. 83.25 are white. 9% are black. 2% are Asian. Pacific Island uh, only 0.3%. And multi ratio are only 0.5%. Among, our, among all the churches, our church is quite unique and unusual among all the denominations. I believe this is the result of a collective effort in many ways. I will come back to this later. Two days ago, the Senate just passed COVID-19 Hate Crime Act. USA Today says this act we expected the Justice, Justice Department's review of hate crimes and would designate an official at the department to oversee the effort. He also would task the department with coordinating with local law enforcement groups and community-based organizations to facilitate and raise awareness about the crimes reporting including establishing an online hate crime reporting system in multiple languages. It's urgent to, for us to know 81% of Asian Americans said that violence against them is rising, especially during the pandemic. We, mo we also need to know there are only two Asian Americans senators. They are Japanese Americans, Nazi, Hiro, uh, Hirono from Hawaii, and the Thai Americans, Kami Duke Worth from Illinois. Recognize their name is also a step of increasing awareness of pain. The hymn we just sang this morning, See the Birds as They Fly, was introduced in 1983, World Council of Churches a general assembly in Canada. The linguists were original from a poem written by Frederick Schaebert Miner, and it was translated into Korean by the composer Nang Yong So. I learned this hymn in Taiwan and sang in Taiwanese in a Taiwanese hymnal from Presbyterian Church. One of my professors translates from English into Taiwanese. And we find out another version in the Korean English Methodist hymn book. And then today we can sing this um, hymn together. This hymn has an interest in travel from South Korea back to Canada. From Canada, go back to Taiwan. I learned this hymn, and now we can sing in United States again. This journey is quite amazing. We also can tell the language has been translated into different language from English to Korean and back to Taiwanese and back to English again. So when we sing the hymn together, we might also understand the meaning a bit different than the original hymn. They also remind me of the shepherd pie I made. I first tasted the shepherd pie was at, at a restaurant called the Duke of Perth, a Scottish restaurant. The pie was served in a small cup covered with a smashed potato. I assume their pie is quite authentic, their Scottish restaurant. But they use beef for their shepherd pie. They are a bit confusing. I assume mm, it should be lamb. So I learned from another recipe uh, from the YouTube. The YouTuber is a Mid-Eastern American, live in New York, and he demonstrated how to prepare a shepherd pie. He used the lamb for the shepherd pie and served in a huge pan, 10 inches pan. So I just say, mm, maybe they are more authentic, then maybe they are more sheep in the mid-eastern mid area. So I told you, Adam, I want to prepare a super fight for you. So what do you prefer? Adam is Jewish American. He said to me, I want half and half. 
half lamb and half beef is good for me. So I was thinking, oh, maybe there are more sheep in Israel. So I just follow his instruction. So I use half and half and a huge pan. I also try to make it taste as good as I taste at that restaurant, Scottish restaurant. And I turn out there's a third party certification. He said to me, this pie tastes so authentic, exactly the shape of pie should be. But I just thinking one thing, with the, all the process I learned from a Scottish restaurant in Chicago, I learned a recipe from a Miss Eastern YouTuber live in New York. And I also learned some instruction from Adam, a Jewish American. So what should people call this shepherd pie? What kind of style should be? So as it turns out, there's a particular term for this shepherd pie. I will call this high part Taiwanese shepherd pie. It's quite authentic, especially for the people who live in this place. It's my experience of the shepherd pie. The scripture today in John, the image of the shepherd has a long history and connection with the Hebrew Bible. King David might be a good shepherd in some uh, perspective. For example, in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in a green pasture, and he leads me beside still water. He restored my soul. He lead me in the, high, the right path, for his name's sake. The scripture, uh, scripture today is among different parables about sheep. Jesus identified himself as a good shepherd. In some different interpretations, people will say Jesus is a mother of shepherd. People could have an image in their mind already, the shepherd in our tradition. But right now, Jesus has different understanding Identify himself as a good shepherd, the mother of the shepherd. He also tried to have an interesting teaching among the sheep, himself and the God. He connects three of them. And more interesting thing is that Jesus said, I have other sheep do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, and there should be one flock one shepherd. What does that mean? Although we have experienced the Holy Week and the Good Friday, we know Jesus really our shepherd. He leads us our way, he even died for us. But what does that mean for the Good Shepherd in our context? What does that mean for the other sheep should be here as well? Let me share several stories. The president of the Baptist Convention of Hong Kong, Reverend Lo Ching Tsai, is now in London, United Kingdom. He just resigned from that position several days ago, right after he arrived in London safely. Reverend Lo wrote a public letter to, the, uh, to express his painful decision to leave his church and the community in this very moment. It is Hong Kong's national security law that became the last straw. There's no freedom in Hong Kong anymore. There's no democracy or human right there anymore, says Reverend Law. Reverend Law became the president of the Baptist Convention of Hong Kong since 2018. He led the Baptist Church to fight for freedom Hong Kong. However, while the pro-democrat activists and lawmakers were arrested one after another, Reverend Law was told, you will be the next soon. In the meantime, the Baptist Convention had no candidate nominated for the next president to be elected. Reverend Law is not alone. One of my friends arrived in Taiwan last week let me just call him George. George asked for Taiwan's asylum. He got married 
two days before he got aboard on the plane to Taiwan. George was a social worker, a Christian, who was arrested by the Hong Kong police during the anti-totalitarian movement about two years ago. His colleagues, were, has, his colleagues has been arrested again, one after another. My friend George was told, you will be the next soon. He and, it, he and his wife need to spread the fake news about their wedding day. And at the same time, he need to apply for Taiwan's asylum secretly. He did not feel relief until his flight has left the airport. Some of his friends were not so fortunate and were arrested on the plane. The police just took them away from the plane. George and his wife had to leave their parents, friends, relatives, and their cats in Hong Kong. They have no other opportunities to meet them again in their hometown. Both Reverend Law and my friend George feel guilty and are reluctant to become a runaway dissenter. dissenter. They both lead, led a group of faithful people and work so hard for a common good society in Hong Kong. They, re they receive threats, letters, and they live under the shade of death. They are still on their journey with God, their shepherd. How should a good shepherd do when they encounter this kind of situation? Someone might mention Dietrich ben Benhover. He was one of the important theologians in the Confession Church, 1934, in Germany. This church against Nazis and Ad Adolf Hitler in Germany. In the same year, Karl Barth organized the Berlin Synod and announced the Berlin Declarations. The church should be faithful to the word of God, Jesus the Christ, the gospel only, no other authority neither to a particular leader or any form of government. Therefore, the Berman Declaration rejects the subordinations of the church to the state, but only to the word and spirit of the church. Those runaway deserters should learn from the model of, of the Dietrich Benhover who choose to stay and die in a concentration camp in Germany. Someone might say this. Or someone might mention another person, Paul Tillich, who left Germany for the United States in 1933 and stayed here for the rest of his life. He taught in different seminaries, Union Seminary in New York for 22 years, Harvard for seven years, United, uh, University of Chicago for four more years, and died here. He seldom, he sometimes visited the Jimmy's Labard on 55th, 55th Street. He could never go back to Germany, but he participates in the anti-Nazi movement, political propaganda on air through the radio and the theological education. Paul Tillich died to himself and was transformed into another way of life by lots of pain and sorrow. Well, how will we say about this model, this model of shepherd? It takes time for a transformation to happen. Paul Tillich also wrote many books, even me. I read his three volumes of systematic theology, the shaking of the foundations, the Protestant era, and the new being in Taiwan. I was influenced by his experience and thought. This German-American became one of my spiritual mentors, including Paul, Paul uh, Tillich, a German-American. Reverend Law, 
a Hong Kong Britian, and my friend George, a Hong Kong Taiwanese, although they had to leave their ship, won't, also, won't you also call them a kind of good shepherd, a mother of shepherd in some way, in some day? And from now on, people can start to learn more about the good shepherd, the mother of good shepherd, the mother of against the totalitarianism shepherd, not only from the European Americans model, but also from non white persona. I want to echo to Mina's reflections. Every face says there's a story behind it. A story, a struggle, a pain, and their experience. People who came to the United States had different reasons, and their descendants might have quite different understanding of their journey as well. They have different viewpoints with their parents. The first generation immigrants have lots of strong connection with, their, with the place they left. They always think about it, talk about it, share with people about it. There's, they also feel a kind of in-between situation between the so-called Asian-American. They are Asian, but they are also American. Sometimes the dash represents a lower level of citizenship in someone's perspective, or kind of outsider from the mainstream community. However, just like the shepherd pie I made, the High Park Taiwanese shepherd pie, is pretty authentic and unique for me and also to some people. The hyphen here is a symbol of crossing boundaries and bring new possibility and a new being. And who are those other sheep? Around two weeks ago, there was a history committee at our virtual coffee hour. Because there's a cross from Siam, 1933, in our church, draw my attention, the cross just behind our sanctuary. I would like to find out how it was sent here. Siam is now called Thailand. That cross was a gift from the church in Siam to express our appreciation to the missionaries sent by our church. A note next to that tin wood cross mentioned the cross was handmade by a young Siamese who converted to Christianity. He was baptized by two uh, uh, missionaries. Dr. and Mrs. Douglas Art Kohler. Dr. Kohler was a medical doctor, graduate from uh, Bellot College, Wisconsin, in 1919. Dr. Douglas Houghton was a pastor at that time when we received this gift. And the Davis family in our church still has a strong connection with overseas missionaries. The interesting history committee still tell me lots of things. During the World War II, lots of Japanese Americans were put to detention camps or asked, forced to leave their home in the West Coast. Chicago turned out one of the locations they were reallocated become the unique history of Chicago. Some of the Japanese Americans that live in Oakland and Kenwood, the family lived there just next to us. Several Christian congregations, Buddhist temples, Shinto congregations were here. Our church was one of the churches who opened our arm and door for them. And the Hashimoto family is still remembered by many of us today. One of the historians in that his history committee also find out lots of old church uh, 
directories in the basement. In December 1974, church uh, directory, there were 14 last names, 29 people that could be Filipino. Among those names, Mrs. Mrs. Domingo and Ramos were still on the list till 1988. In the 1980s, there was a Korean family, the K family, list in the church bulletins and the report also reported by this historian. It seems to me that our church has a long history of caring the others. It does not surprise me that our church keep demonstrating a persona that most of the congregations in UCC, PUSA, UMC could not do. In this sense, we might be on the path of becoming a model of the Good Shepherd, those who were with us fulfill the visions of becoming one flock, one shepherd, and give a new meaning to this scripture, especially in High Park, among three different denominations. I could imagine at those days when people joined the Sunday worship, they would say to each other, like Hashimoto-san, Ohayo gozaimasu. Or say to the Korean family, we will say, Pyonghwa le pimida, all the time. Folks love to send greeting to each other in their own languages. I believe this is also the work of the Holy Spirit that we can learn to use multi-language and express our hospitality, the headset from God and Jesus, the Good Shepherd. These stories are part of us. We could continue to collect those fragments and retell those stories and have uh, reactions on that. For me, I'm pretty curious about who was that young man who made this cross? How is that church in Thailand right now? I try hard to find out more information from PCSA's history archive and got overwhelmed. <laughs> How are those Hashimoto families and who are those Japanese American who live in Kenwood, just nearby us? Where are they now? How about Mrs. Domingo and Ramos and those uh, Filipinos, friends, our family members? How is the K family now? The curiosities could be our motivations to keep demonstrating our model of a good shepherd, welcoming the other sheep. We also can develop a unique theological perspective based on our shared common experience, memory, and stories. I would like to conclude with one of my favorite uh, great thinker and explorer, Jean-Luc Picard. While someone challenged him and questioned him, why don't you unify and eliminate all the differences? Doesn't it quite easy for you to control everything? Speak in one language and have a better communication for each other. Would that be better for your society? John Lu Picard replied and saying, No, our people are quite different, therefore, we are strong. Amen.